So today I'm going to show you how to do a burn test on fibers. Uh, I've got my two unknown fibers here that I'm going to be testing. And let's see here. For starters, I'm going to go ahead and light my candle because you don't want to use your candle as soon as you light it. You need to let it burn down a little bit so anything that may be on the wick burns off. Um, and you'll see the flame settle down when it's ready to be used. So to start with, I've got this unknown fiber right here. And to do my test, I'm going to pull off just a little bit of it. That's still too long, so I'm just going to cut myself a nice little section there. Not that piece. <laughs> Now I've got myself a good little section of fibers to use. And what you want to do is with your little tuft of fibers, you want to twist it together to make it nice and compact so that you know what you're getting is actually a result of the fibers burning and not air trapped between them. Um, and what you want to do you don't want to immediately stick your fibers in the flame, but you want to get them close and see if they shrink back from the flame any. And these fibers are not. That lets me know that they are not synthetic. They are some kind of natural fiber because the synthetic fibers should shrink back, all of the polymer-based ones. Um, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and burn your fibers. And what you're looking for are the characteristics of the fiber when it burns. Um, you want to look at the flame, see how fast it burns, how large it burns, the color of it burning. So there you go. And it'll burn up to the point where I'm holding it with the tweezers since I've bundled my fibers nice and tightly. You also want to look for the uh, smell of it, which you wouldn't want to stick it right under your nose. You need to waft it to smell it. Um, you also want to check the smoke when you burn. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side for you. Watch for smoke. See if the smoke has a color, how much it makes. Um, and also when you remove the fibers from the flame, you don't want to burn up your whole sample in the flame. You want to remove them from the flame and see if they keep burning or if they self-extinguish. So. That one self-extinguished. No, I just didn't have enough going. So let me do a little bit more of that one, just so you can see a few more of the characteristics. And I'm going to twist me another nice little bundle of fibers. Hold on to it. Let's try one more time just to make sure we got the right results on if it self-extinguishes or not. There we go. And it's definitely still burning, so it does not self-extinguish. Uh, another thing you should look for is the afterglow. If there were red embers after the flame is done, and there were, but they extinguished very quickly. Um, and you should also look at the type of ash. Let me hold it over a piece of paper so you can see, because the ash is black can see the ash there. You should also look at that to see, well, first of all, if you have ash or if it's just a melted plastic blob, um, if it's soft or if it's crunchy, like this one looks like it's pretty soft and if I, yeah, it just disintegrates if I touch it. Sometimes the, they'll also be uh, crisper, more solid ash. So then I would have all of these properties of that particular fiber that I would write down in my notebook after I've tested that fiber. Have all my fibers and all of those properties I just talked about. Um, and as I test each one, I would fill in the results I got when I'm testing known fibers. So when I have an unknown fiber, I can match my characteristics to whichever one of these it is. So that was a 
natural fiber. You can tell from the flame test results on that. Now I'm going to try another unknown fiber. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of it. This is a lot of it, but I'm using large samples so it's easier to see. You don't need to use this much when you do it yourself. Go ahead and twist it up to get it nice and compact. That's pretty good. Now, let's hold this one up to the flame again. So again, the first thing we're going to look for is if it shrinks away from the heat when I get it close. And it does. I don't know if you can see that because it's white fibers against a white candle. But as I get close to the flame, the fibers are shrinking back from the heat. So that right there lets me know that it's some kind of synthetic material. And then I'll also go ahead and try and burn it now and check for those other characteristics. The, if it flames, the size, the color, how fast, the smoke, all of that, and the smell. If it, and also if it does not self-extinguish, it continues to burn. Ooh, it even got over onto the other side. And there's my smoke. Now, let's see here. Let's check what kind of residue I have. And it looks like on this one, I don't have ash. I actually have a hard plastic blob is what's left. So that and I can smell the way it smells. I can tell that it is a definitely some type of synthetic fiber. And if I actually went back to my chart and checked against the other characteristics, the size of the flame, if it melted, the smell of it, the color and the amount of smoke, uh, the fact that it continued burning rather than self-extinguishing, the afterglow and also the residue, I would be able to identify uh, that this fiber I just tested matches nylon. So I would know that that one was nylon. And that's how you use a fiber burn test to identify an unknown fiber.